Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guyana Q. I was recently working on a lake house, getting all my tables added. Then I realized I need another table and I didn't have access to the data. And so I reached out to the team that I was working with and they were like, oh yeah, we processed that data in Azure Databricks and all the tables that you need over there. And I was like, all right, well, can I get the data? And they're like, sure, we'll export it out for you. And then you could import it and we'll set it. I was like, whoa, whoa. You don't need to do that because with Fabric, I can actually mirror that Azure Databricks over to Fabric using mirroring as long as my Databricks is registered with Union Catalog. That's requirement number one. And they were like, okay, but I need some other stuff. Enough of all this talking. You know how I like to do? Let me show you. Let me show you. Let's head over to my laptop. Here's my lake house. Here's the tables in my lake house and I need some product data. And so if we head over to Azure Databricks and go to my catalog, you can see there's a product management table. So this is registered with Unity Catalog. And then the next thing I needed was this certain permission over in the catalog. And so if you go to product management, you go to permissions, I needed external use schema. And so if you go to grant, you see down here where it is. So I need that. Okay. And so they granted me that there's other prerequisites that you'll need to ensure is in place. Like it's a preview feature. So you need to turn it on, on your tenant in fabric. You need to make sure that you have proper access controls. You need to make sure your storage account that contains Unity catalog and as you Bricks workspace is not behind a private endpoint or a firewall. Once those are in place, then you can go to set up your mirror. So let's go over to Fabric. I'm going to go to my workspace, choose new item. And then you'll see mirrored Azure Databricks catalog. And the connection string is pretty simple. You just go over here to Databricks. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to choose new connection. We're going to pop this in here and there we go. It picks it up and I'm going to click connect, choose next. And then it's going to list out the catalogs. And so I'm going to choose product management and then let's find the schema that I want. I don't want everything. And I just want these two tables, uh, this one and this one. Now, basically what's going to happen is when I set up this mirror, only the schema is going to be copied over the fabric. All the data will be accessed via shortcuts. Oh, no data moves, no data moves from Databricks to fabric. So I choose the two tables I want, and then I can automatically sync future catalog changes for this particular schema. Let's just select the schema because if they add more tables from this product management schema, I want them. Okay. So let's choose the schema, click next, give it a name. Let's give it a shorter name. Prod MGMT, Prod Management. We could choose our sensitivity label and then we click create. I haven't tested this out with a large volume of data. So I guess it's going to be depend on connectivity and volume of data and things like that. But it doesn't take long for this to get going. In fact, if we go back over here, we can actually expand this out and you see my tables are already mirrored. But look at the little icons, right? These are shortcuts. These are just shortcuts back to those tables. If I go view this with my SQL endpoint, Here's my schema, here's my tables. And if I do a new query, I can start selecting, select star from pm.products. And I can run this query and I'm literally querying the data that's over in Azure Databricks in Fabric via shortcut. And I notice, right, I have this product subcategory and I guess there's a join between product and subcategory, so I went back. And I talked to the team that was managing. It was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're about to make some schema changes. And they're like, you're going to have to update. I was like, I don't have to do anything. Check this out. So we go back over to Databricks and I'm going to go to my query editor here. And so they say we're going to add a column. All right, all right, add your column. So we go run this columns added. And so I waited. I'm going to go back over to my mirrored artifact. And when I click refresh and things happen right here, and then I did a preview of my products table and the column is already there. So when they make schema changes, those schema changes are automatically mirrored. What about data changes? Well, let's see. So the column's empty right now. So we'll go over to the catalog. I'm just simulating what happened and I'm running a merge statement right here. So I'm going to remove that and I'm going to run this. Okay. Let's head back over to fabric. Let's go back to my monitor and wait for things to happen. Last sync was at 409. Let's force a sync here. Let's see if we get some data in our products table when this finishes up. Let's click it, load a preview. There we go. Look, so these obviously, if you go look at that update statement, I'm avoiding where the key is null. So there's some blanks in it, but now you can see my data is being replicated over. And now there was one final change. He was like, and so what we're going to also do is get rid of this product table. So I'm like, all right, this subcategory table. So I run that and gets rid of that table. I go back over here 
I'm gonna force a refresh and let's see if that table goes away. So you can see the subcategory table is gone because I don't need it anymore because they denormalized it and now all my data is sitting right in a single table. And now what I can do, if I go over to my lake house where I need this table, I go here, new shortcut, choose Microsoft One Lake. You'll see my product management table right here. I'm going to go to my schema because I only need this table and I'm going to choose next and I'm going to rename this table. I'm going to edit this dim product. This is my shortcut. I'm not really changing anything over there. So I'm going to go ahead and accept those changes and click create. And just like that, you'll see my dim product table added to my lake house. I didn't copy the data. The schema is only copying. They are managing it over on their side. So any changes, schema changes they make, any data changes they make automatically get all that stuff. They add in tables it'll automatically appear in my mirror. No data movement. It all works. Schema changes. Everything absolutely works for me in a tight, integrated way. So fabric and data bricks better together? Maybe. All right. What do you think? You any questions, comments? Are you using this? I'd love to know. You know what to do. Post it in the comments below. If you want to learn more about fabric or the workloads in fabric, it's probably a video flying above my head. And as always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.